Hello, welcome to my office. I'm Dr. T, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about chemical safety. Not necessarily how to handle chemicals properly, that's a topic for another video, uh, but instead how to understand what you're working with uh, for that particular chemical. Now, regulations do vary. I'm located in the United States, and I'm going to be focusing on rules and regulations and whatnot that are relative to the US. Obviously, if you're not in the US, a different set of rules will apply, although these are fairly standardized, so something similar is almost certainly available in your current location. Now, all chemicals that are commercially sold, uh, whether it be something from a chemical supply company or if you're talking about large amounts of eh, floor cleaner or whatever, uh, must contain with them or readily available a safety data sheet. There's the older material safety data sheet that is still floating around a bit, uh, but currently the new version is the SDS or safety data sheet. This is going to list uh, in a fairly structured format, what are the risks of the particular chemical, uh, what precautions you need to take, uh, as well as other useful information about that chemical. Now, if you're dealing with chemicals and there needs to be a little bit more of a quick sign that's like, here, chemical, danger level. For that case, we typically use the National Fire Protection Agency's uh, hazmat diamond. In this case, the uh, diamond has four squares, or four diamonds, because it's a square turned on side. On the left-hand side is a blue diamond, and that is going to indicate the relative risk for your health. This goes between zero and four, and all the diamonds that are numbered go between these uh, numbers. Zero being, eh, no big deal, probably nothing. Four being, this is dangerous, respect this. Uh, the top diamond is red, and that represents uh, flammability. Will this burn? Zero, no it won't. Four being, very well, this burns great. Uh, be careful with fire around it. The right-hand diamond is yellow, and that is explosive. Zero, it's not gonna blow up, it's just gonna sit there. It's actually reactivity, or you know, how well is it going to do something? Uh, larger numbers, it may not explode, but it's definitely gonna do some interesting chemistry, potentially, uh, so you do wanna be careful. It could react fairly readily. And four, uh, this thing can blow up, so be extremely careful. The bottom diamond is white, and that won't have a number typically. Instead, that is going to have a symbol indicating other hazards. Is it an acid? Is it radioactive? Does it react violently with water? Uh, that's going to go there. These are typically used as a, a nice shorthand to give a relative risk factor uh, for, say, a tank or a bottle. Now, uh, there is a quick point, though. The Fire Protection Agency uh, numbering system, 0 through 4, uh, is the reverse of the OSHA, Occupational Safety Hazard Administration, numbering system, which is found on the newer SDSs. The old MSDSs, or Material Safety Data Sheets, quite often use the National Fire Protection Agency numbering, but the newer ones go for the global base system, which is similar to that of the OSHA. In that case, low number, bad. Larger number, good. So they are a 4 or 5, no big deal. A one, be afraid. Uh, which is an interesting quirk, something I wish wasn't the case, but I don't make the rules. Now, I alluded to OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Hazard Administration. Uh, this is one of three government agencies that, as a chemist, uh, you want to be aware of. Uh, they help protect us, and uh, sometimes they can get annoying, but, you know, they're there for a reason. OSHA's job is to protect employees, and they do so of really any companies, not just those involving chemistry. And as a student, uh, students would be covered with OSHA as well. Uh, the goal here is to make sure that employment is done in a way that is safe for everyone involved, that you're not, say, juggling boiling vats of acid. You know, that would be bad. Uh, and necessary precautions are taken. The next organization is the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. They're not really focused on the employees of an organization, but instead of the people around the organization, and not just the people, the critters and whatnot. Uh, they're there to protect the environment, as their name would suggest, and 
the environment, once again, is also the people. You don't want to uh, have people exposed to toxic chemicals. There is, of course, the classic case of Love Canal. Love Canal was a hazardous waste dump that was then covered over and uh, someone built a subdivision on it, which is not where you want to put a subdivision, just in case you were curious. Uh, the reason why you don't want to put a subdivision on top of a hazardous waste dump was, as in the case of Love Canal, the hazardous waste wasn't sealed particularly well. It leached up through the soil and the children were exposed to way too much hazardous waste and they developed rather interesting and horrible cancers. Yeah, that was a problem. Lots of lives ruined and it was a mess. Uh, additionally, there was a northern Ohio uh, river uh, back in the 1970s, which companies had liberally dumped various chemicals into the river. There was really not that much environmental regulation at the time, and the river caught fire. I don't mean the barges or the boats on the river caught fire. I mean the stuff flowing through the river caught fire. And I say stuff because it wasn't water. Water does not burn. It was what was in the river caught fire. Uh, we haven't had that lately because, you know, regulations are important. Of course, they are also potentially quite annoying, so there's always a balance. The last organization I'd like to bring up is the Chemical Safety Board. They're modeled after the Transportation Safety Board, and their responsibility is to look into chemical accidents where things went really wrong, such as a fertilizer plant exploding or natural gas lines blowing up, uh, flower plants exploding. Turns out flour, you know, the stuff you make bread with, if you foof it up too much, it will explode. Uh, they're there to make recommendations on how to make sure whatever horrible accident has taken place does not take place again, just as the TSB is there to make sure that two planes don't fall out of the side for the same reason. Now, hopefully you don't interact with any of the three agencies too awful much. I mean, EPA, there's definitely some paperwork uh, that goes through them. How you properly dispose chemicals, you don't just you know, shove everything down the drain. That's bad. That leads to fish kills. Uh, obviously, OSHA, CSB, something has probably gone wrong if you're interacting with them, so I'm hoping you don't. Uh, but you definitely want to keep in mind where to get information about your chemicals and to learn how to treat them properly. The main danger, chemicals are like knives. They're useful if you use them right, but if you use them poorly, they will hurt you. So keep in mind, knowing is half the battle, and I'll see you next time.